I have got something very exciting to show you all today. But first, we're gonna go back and start at the beginning of the day. I'm working on my precision with some recipes because my blog will be up and running in no time. And once I finish in the kitchen today, I will show you what exactly is on these trailers. I have been baking bread for probably 10 years now, somewhere around there, and I did not start out by baking sourdough bread. I started out with quick breads, just, you know, yeast breads, very simple, straightforward recipes, and I saved my family a lot of money for years doing that, making delicious homemade bread that way before I ever ventured into sourdough. So by the time I, I did get into starting a sourdough starter and experimenting with sourdough, I had a lot of experience with bread baking and I really had a good feel for what dough should look like, what a rise, a proof should look like, and what the final product should look like. And I actually just adapted all of my existing favorite recipes to be sourdough recipes. So that is how I got started with sourdough. I made a starter and I use all of my own yeast recipes just with adaptations. And now here we are, you know, 10 years later, five or six years after I've, since I've started a sourdough starter. And I actually do a lot of reverse adaptation now because I will make up a sourdough recipe and then I will go back and adapt that to be a yeast bread or a discard recipe. And that is what I am working on today. A couple of the recipes that I showed you all recently, my sourdough pandemi, um, which I made a few different variations of that, and my sourdough milk buns. I am kind of reverse engineering those and making them discard recipes, meaning, yes, I am using using um, isolated yeast as, as the leavening agent because I'm using fully flat or inactive sourdough discard in these recipes. And I am going to photograph the final prod product and get these recipes up on my blog. They won't be on my blog though when you see this video. It'll be a few weeks later. I'm actually just in the process of kind of getting into a flow of having recipes not only here on YouTube but also on my blog. So it'll take me a little bit of time to have that synchronized. But moral of that story is I want everything to be precise when it goes up on the blog. You know, here in my YouTube descriptions, I share my notes, basically. That's what I share. You guys get my notes. That I, I have a little cookbook. Um, it's, it's a little notebook that's called Mom's Recipes. <laughs> and that's where I write things down. That's where I make up recipes. And I just rip a page out. You know, if I write something down, it ends up just being a draft. And I have to revise it. But then what's left are all my final favorite recipes. So that's what you get. You get my notes out of mom's recipe book. <laughs> However, when things go up on my blog, I really want to have the weight measurements as well as, you know, cups, tablespoons, teaspoons, and all that. So that way, for those of you who do faithfully use a scale, you have reliable measurements to go by. And sometimes it really is helpful to weigh as you are baking, especially in this recipe, this sourdough pandemie, you, you bake it with the lid on. So if you have a dough that is too heavy, your bread doesn't have anywhere to go to escape. It actually, you know, if there's way too much dough in there, it will kind of like explode out the sides. The top, the lid won't blow off or anything, nothing crazy like that, but you will have dough kind of running out the sides of the pan. But more than likely, what will happen is you will just end up with a very dense loaf, like really heavy. It'll feel like a brick. You, you want to make sure that you get the weight 
right. And for this particular recipe, you really don't want to go over 1200 grams. So I have measured and weighed and gotten my recipe to be about 1150. So 1150 grams. So that's that's a good weight for this loaf, for this long 13 inch loaf. If you use a shorter pan, then you're gonna need less dough. And maybe at some point I will add conversions onto my blog recipes. So here I am just, I mixed up that dough that you've seen me made before. Now I'm kneading it up and you guys see this is just such a, oh, flexible, moist dough. This is not a stiff, dough so you saw my trick you know I kind of let it rest before working with it I do not have a stand mixer I do all of my baking by hand that's not really by choice it's because you know I've shared this my stand mixer broke quite a while back and I just can't bite the bullet and buy a new one you know I do strongly believe in investing in kitchen tools but I just don't mind hand mixing and hand kneading and it's just Gosh, it's several hundred dollars. I mean, the good ones, what are they, like six, the big ones, like the industrial ones, six or seven hundred dollars. So maybe at some point I'll do it. I'll bite the bullet. I'll get another one. But for now, it's just not an inconvenience for me to mix by hand. And like I said, you know, the secret to working with these stickier, more hydrated doughs is just let them rest on your counter for a while and um, they'll become a lot more workable. Don't keep adding flour right at the beginning because then you'll end up with a stiff dough. I know you all have seen my proofer many times, but I really cannot stress how enough how handy this thing is. This was actually a um, Christmas gift from my mom she gets the best Christmas gifts. It's just my sister and I, and we're all really close. We talk all the time. We have a lot of the same interests. So she knows what we're into. She knows what would make our lives easier. And yeah, this was a couple of years ago now. So I've, I've used it for a lot of things. You can use this proofer for so many things. You can make basically anything that you need a small temperature controlled space with moisture you can use this for and it's very you saw me just set it up it's not hard <laughs> it just takes a few seconds and it folds up very small i store it in a cabinet and so it doesn't take up constant counter space so i just got my bread going in the proofer so now my bulk ferment has begun my first rise now i am moving on to the Japanese milk buns, which I'm also adapting to be a sourdough recipe. And I'm out of milk, of course, on the day that I want to do this, I am out of milk. See, I just can't, I can't do this not having a dairy cow in milk because I'm not used to having to buy dairy or go to the co-op pickup and I forget. Uh, anyway, that's okay. I had some cream, so I'm just watering down cream to get to the right weight that it will be for the recipe and the results will be the same. It'll be fine. Um, and you know, what you're going to see later in this video is a eventual solution to <laughs> running out of milk. Actually, not that eventual. Here, within a few months, we should never really have a situation where we would run out of fresh dairy again. But we'll get to that in just a little bit, I'm going to continue on here. So sourdough discard recipes are very handy to have for a few reasons. I would say number one, they're just quicker because you're not waiting on the active sourdough starter to, to do your fermenting. Um, that's a long fermentation time when all you use as a leavening agent is your start, your active starter. Now, if you have a proofer like I do, you can cut down on your fermentation time, or if it's just warm out and your house is warm, things will move faster. If you have a very good, strong starter, things will move faster. But it just takes longer when you bake with starter, and that's a good thing because that's what breaks down a lot of the gluten and makes your breads and baked goods just more, you know, easily digestible. So it's a good 
thing, waiting and doing that long ferment with sourdough only. But sometimes you just don't have time. That's me. I've told you guys we live a very modern life. You guys see me here in my kitchen and all my videos are edited. <laughs> like, always keep that in mind. So, you know, I edit out all the times when I wash my hands in between tasks or I run and tend to one of my children between tasks or I do a million things. You just see the hands-on time. So it might look like all I do is work in the kitchen, but that's just far from reality. We do a lot outside of our home. We leave our home a lot. We have all in all just a, a modern life you know we do some old-fashioned things and that's that's what you see here but because we live a modern life and we have modern commitments I guess you would say I don't always have time to be prepared with sourdough and with doing things the long old-fashioned way and that's not something that I get upset about fortunately we don't have anyone in my family with really bad food intolerances or anything so we can handle if we need to pick up a loaf of bread at the store or eat out somewhere or if I make our baked goods with other leavening agents such as yeast, you know, that that's fine. No one has a big reaction or anything. Like I said, I know it is objectively healthier to do strictly sourdough, but that's just not the reality in my home. And it's very handy to have these discard recipes and the yeast recipes. That's why I share them because there are a lot of people who are probably in this position as well. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my dough down. I got a nice, nice rise there. And just going to prepare these loaves for the second rise. Um, it's pretty quiet in my house. You may have seen my little guy. It is he and I because my daughter is having a girl's day with grandma. They're working on a sewing project. She loves to sew, so I'm sure she's having a blast today. And my boys are somewhere else. They are doing something else. And I'm actually, you know, I'm going to shape this bread, let it, do the second rise, bake it, and then set it to the side, and hopefully go meet up with the guys. Actually, several family members are gone right now, and they are on a cattle drive. So you might have guessed that, you know, watching the intro to the video, seeing trailers pull up with cattle, so <laughs> not that hard to guess. But I will show you these brand new beauties here momentarily when I wrap up my baking for the day. And as you see, I, I, I kept my scale out this whole time. Like I said, I'm just really trying to be precise here so that my recipes on the blog are just right. And I want to make sure that they look really pretty for pictures too. So this cinnamon raisin loaf I'm going to load up with raisins, probably do more raisins than usual so that they really stand out for the camera, which I'll show you guys. I've, I've shared maybe in one of my last videos that I recently got a new camera that will make my photography job a lot easier. It's just a lot more user friendly. You know, I've been shooting on an old Canon Rebel in manual forever, and I love that. I really like all kinds of photography. I don't mind shooting in manual on a camera that doesn't have an autofocus feature, but the autofocus on my new camera is fabulous. You know, it's manual settings, but I can click the screen and it autofocuses for me. It's just much faster, much nicer. And you know, this is, it's just a new element for me. I don't know if you guys care about this kind of stuff, like behind the scenes of YouTube and blogging, but you know, the, the filming does not take me any extra time, really. I mean, I set up my camera and I do things that I would already be doing, food that I'd already be making for my family. I just get it on camera and I'm not super careful about what I do and don't get on camera because I can go back and edit. So I, you know, I don't tell my family, like, everyone be quiet and don't walk over here. I tell them, in fact, the opposite. I'm like, 
act like you can't see the camera. Just, we're living our life. I'm cooking like I cook every day. Just be. And I will go back and I will edit whatever I need to edit. So the filming for video is like no problem at all. However, adding in the photography element, you know, it's not necessarily that it will be much more time consuming. It's just another element that I have to think about. I can't shoot photos in the dark. So I need to make sure that whatever I'm filming, I get it done early in the day so that I can then take pictures and have plenty of natural light. So really it's just a timing thing, which if anything, this will actually keep me more accountable and just kind of help me finish my cooking and tasks earlier in the day. And then I'm done for the day. So it's, it's not going to be a bad thing. It's just something that I need to think about and, you know, potentially adjust my schedule a little bit. I typically one day a week I film. So, you know, there are seven days a week. So six days, I'm not doing anything with the camera. One day I take, I usually have a total of like an hour of footage. Half of that gets edited out because the camera's just running because I forgot, you know, and I'm like, it's, I'm washing my hands, doing dishes and the camera's still running. So it's one hour of my week that a camera is rolling. It's just honestly not that much. All right, I'm finishing up here, brushing these buns with an egg wash, gonna put it, get everything in the oven, get everything baked take everything out and let it cool and then I will come back tomorrow morning for my pictures but I need to head out because the guys are going to be home very soon and I'm very excited to see what they brought home with them So this is not our farm, these are not our trailers, and these are not our cows. This is a sort of extended family project, and by that I mean that I, John and I didn't purchase these cows, we don't own these cattle, but I did help locate all of them and communicate with the sellers for all of these purchases for um, family members, and I am so excited because this is something that we're going to be involved in and be working with you will see here in a little while that there is a bull in this bunch i'll tell you a little bit more about these these beauties here and <laughs> there is a bull in the bunch and we're going to be using him to breed our jersey girls for their next breeding so i'm very excited that we get to be involved here so what you are looking at in this particular trailer these are called normandy cattle normandies as in normandy france but there are two different breeds that you're gonna see actually three because there are a couple crosses too so the ones that are all white in the back and you'll get to see them um, really clear here in a little bit but the ones that are all white those are white parks so white parks and normandies and the reason these breeds were chosen is because they are great dual purpose breeds so they are a little bit stockier than your average dairy cows they're great for meat great for beef so there's the bull he just got off there they're great for beef and um, great for great dairy producers too Normandy cattle I mean Normandy milk Normandy cream and milk it is actually known to make some of the best cheese in the world so you know and, I, and from what I have researched and from what I understand Normandy's give can give just as much cream as Jersey. So I'm very, very excited about this. And the, white parks. the white parks that you see getting off here. So they're all white. And they've got a little black on the ears and, and, the, and the nose. They're just beautiful. Um, so there's the bull. And you'll get to see, because I'm going to come back tomorrow morning and show you in the daylight. It's hard to see now, but it was, it was just nighttime when the guys got back. And I'm actually filming on my phone. I just really wanted to show you guys because this was really fun and exciting. You can see lots of little heads peeking out the side of the manger here. We're all watching, waiting for all of the cattle to arrive. There were two trailers. So the first one you saw 
on load had a Normandy bull. He's 100% Normandy. And then uh, three white parks. So those all came from different places. So this cattle drive had a few different stops. It was mostly in the northern Midwest. Um, but yeah, a few different stops, <laughs> two different trailers. So I think there, uh, for this particular drive, there were a total of 12 cows. Um, but by the time all is said and done, there'll be 15. And several of these are bred. The, all, the three white parks that you saw, they are all bred to a 100% white park bull. So we're going to have beautiful 100% white park babies uh, within the next few months. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm just so excited about all of this. So what you're going to see getting off this trailer, these are Normandy yearling heifers. So a heifer is a cow, a female, that has never had a calf. You know, these are not bred. You can see they're small. They're only a year old. So they need to wait another 10 to 12 months to be bred until they are full sized. Um, Normandies and white parks, they are bigger than most jerseys. Then again, you have different size jerseys. You've got mini jerseys, mid size, and standard. I've got mid size jerseys. So these will be larger, larger than the jerseys. Okay, so there's there's some more getting off. So the ones you saw get off in front, those were yearling heifers, but some of these are actually older. And some of these Normandy girls that you see getting off are cows, meaning that they have had calves before and a few of them are actually bred. So lots of really pretty baby calves coming up. So you can see everybody. We're just gonna yeah. put them the um, you know, in the barn for tonight. Let them out in the pasture once it's daylight <laughs> and we can kind of keep an eye on them. But tonight they will just go in here. It's already kind of late. They can spend the night in here, their new home, and then get used to everything tomorrow. All right, well, it is morning. I've got lots of good morning light. I got my new camera out, so I'm going to take some pictures and we'll eat breakfast. <laughs> So I'm going to make breakfast sandwiches for everyone. That way they're not hangry, crowding the table. And then I will take my pictures here. I actually had my old camera and my new camera out. And I took some pictures of both because I just wanted to compare. And oh my goodness, the new one is just amazing. Um, yeah, very, very easy to use. So I'll show you here some pictures from my new camera in a moment. I have never used backdrops before, but I really like the idea of having a clean backdrop for certain pictures when you really want the item you're photographing to stand out. Because when people search for recipes on Google, they're not searching to look at pictures of your home or your kitchen. At least I'm not. When I look for a recipe, I want to make that food. All I'm thinking about is that particular food item that I'm trying to make and I just want a clear picture of it. So that's what I'm trying to produce for my blog and this camera is just nailing it. All right, I promised we would see the cows in the daylight, so let's do that. So as you can see, they are very tame, very docile. Now most of these have been handled a lot, but these breeds just tend to be more on the gentle, docile side. I love my jerseys, but jerseys definitely have more of a personality. And I would never, ever in a million years be standing in a pasture with my back turned to a Jersey bull. Um, but Normandy bulls are just known for being just so gentle, so sweet and docile, easy to handle, not a risk to the owners or little kids, which is really important. I think I've shared with you guys before, one of the biggest factors, one, of us deciding not to ever have a Jersey Bull again was our kids. But, um, you know, after we decided that because of how rough and dangerous they are, our Jersey Bull actually pinned my husband on the ground. And my husband is, he's 6'5", he's huge. He's not small at all. And he's not like a weak guy. He's a very strong, big guy. So just not worth it especially when there are other options all right well for all of my cattle so enthusiasts true. especially my you know dairy enthusiasts i, I will leave you with a little bit more oh, 
footage of these beauties and some pictures that I took with my new camera as well. They made very, very good subjects. So sweet. Pop your bell. Which one's Poppy and which one's Bell? But they're Poppy and Bell. 